I write a lot of human growth hormone. I have a lot of experience. I'm an endocrinologist and um, actually also an expert witness for, for doctors who get in trouble uh, with their medical boards. But that's, that's a thing that I really don't like to do is the expert witness. But I can see all the issues that, um, that has that the cases I've seen, so I can kind of tell you later on what you can do to prevent and get in trouble. But um, anyway, I've um, used a lot of human growth hormone uh, for over 15 years, and um, I, I can basically share you some interesting pearls on how to, how to basically get uh, your patient on human growth hormone if everything else fails. So what I tell my patient is that, you know, if someone comes to my office for initial consultation, they go, hey, doc, uh, I like to really try HGH therapy. I say, well, you know, it's like uh, human growth hormone is like turbocharging your engine. And if you have four flat tires, like adrenal fatigue, no testosterone, your liver's you know, not detoxing well, and your, your thyroid's off, and you have elevated reverse T3, or you have insulin resistance or progesterone deficiency, you're not sleeping well, there's no way I'm going to give you human growth hormone. You've got to fix everything else. You've got to get those four tires fixed. Once, once that gets going, then you can basically, you know, consider human growth hormone. So um, growth hormone is really controversial. It's actually um, uh, Mark Gordon mentioned that uh, um, the FDA and the medical boards have really made it difficult for um, health care providers uh, to write human growth hormone. Um, there, are, there have been several um, cases where physicians actually go to jail uh, because they don't do the proper testing. Uh, they, just, they don't even examine the patient. They just do it all over the Internet or something like that. So um, human growth hormone um, can really help your patient. And I just want to give you a little background of, uh, of endocrinology. And um, human growth hormone or growth hormone is a peptide hormone. It's, it's an amino acid, 191 amino acid that's uh, um, made in the pituitary gland and uh, secreted from the pituitary. Actually, it's made in the hypothalamus and um, secreted in the, basically, um, pituitary gland. So here's, here's the shortest woman ever, and uh, it's basically this is someone with uh, growth hormone deficiency. I've never seen a case this, this bad, and uh, this is just an uh, FYI. Uh, I don't think you'll ever see these cases here, but this is of a historical importance. But uh, this, you know, I've seen kids with human growth, I mean, actually with short stature, and it, it's tough for little, little, actually for boys or young, young, young teenagers because they get picked on and kids are cruel. And it's amazing when they get on human growth hormone, when they qualify, and assuming the insurance company, you know, pays for it, it's amazing how you can change their life. I mean, they have from no confidence to now they want to do everything in the world. And, you know, that, that's the greatest pleasure you can, you can, you can get from um, being a physician. So I was kind of privileged in my previous level where I trained. Um, I've worked with some endocrinologists that dealt with a lot of pediatrics. So I kind of had a exposure to uh, pediatric endo. But um, anyway, growth hormone... Axis is important, and uh, remember, it's the hypothalamic pituitary, and then you've got to think of the of liver, because the hypothalamus um, basically secretes a hormone called GHRH, and secretes, uh, basically stimulates the pituitary gland to secrete uh, growth hormone. And then growth hormone goes through the liver to secrete IGF-1, or insulin growth factor 1. And that's really your active growth hormone, is your IGF-1. So that's kind of a simple uh, diagram right there. And there's, there's this uh, other hormone called uh, somatostatin, and if you have too much somatostatin, you can actually suppress the whole cycle there. But uh, it gets a little more complicated, and this is just uh, another kind of cartoon to show that uh, ghrelin and leptin, it's, um, these are other hormones. They're actually considered fat hormones. And ghrelin, if you guys don't know about ghrelin, ghrelin is a hormone that stimulates hunger. So if, if you can reduce ghrelin, you're not going to be hungry all the time. But uh, ghrelin actually stimulates the pituitary to make a growth hormone. And uh, leptin actually in, inhibits it there. So growth hormone, um, as it's uh, basically secreted from the pituitary, goes back to the liver, 
stimulates the liver to make IGF-1, and then IGF-1 has to be carried with uh, binding proteins, and there's the main binding proteins, uh, IGF uh, binding protein 3, and it can stimulate basically muscle growth, and uh, it can help women or men with osteoporosis, and I've seen so many patients get on human growth hormone and a significant improvement on the DEXA score from negative two and a half without using Fosamax or any other um, <coughs> prescription medications. Um, and uh, it's amazing how you can actually improve on um, actually their bone density. And I have a lot of people who actually, you know, they get on human growth hormone. They also, you know, not only they, they start uh, burning fat and start leaning out, but they also uh, look younger. Not all of them, but uh, I have this one patient. Every time I see her, she keeps looking younger and younger. So there's some stimulators uh, for growth hormone. Um, one of the most important things I tell my patients is if you don't sleep well, you're never going to get your um, growth hormone up. So that's the big questions that I ask my patients, like, you know, how much sleep do you get? Does your do you have a pet in your bed bedroom? Do you have a little cat that comes in or a dog that wakes you up or little kids or something like that? Or do you have a husband that's, or a, a wife that snores a lot? You know, you may need to sleep in different rooms. Or do you get, like, hit uh, constantly by your, your significant other? So someone's shaking their head. <laughs> so it, it's really important to get good quality sleep. And, you, you know, you... you they may even need to get a sleep apnea study. And I've seen people who don't look like they have typical sleep apnea, and they do the sleep study test, and wow, they have moderate sleep apnea. And uh, once they get treated, it's amazing how their uh, IGF-1 improves. So I tell them sleep, and number two is exercise. If you only remember two things, the sleep and exercise will basically uh, increase your IGF-1. And uh, if you don't exercise, uh, you should exercise because you should be a, you know, a role model for your patients. And uh, anyway, I, this is really important uh, to basically um, to do daily, consistently. And then one thing that we're going to talk about later is how to do the insulin tolerance test. Um, and it's basically dropping the blood sugar so it stimulates growth hormone. So I'll explain that. Um, you know, L-arginine's in there too, but... Uh, you know, I kind of learned in another, L-arginine classically can stimulate uh, growth hormone, but um, I have a little questions about that. And we could talk later about, about that. But there's inhibitors for growth hormone, and that's high blood sugars or uncontrolled diabetes, steroids, uh, too much estrogen, estrogen dominance, and remember leptin. And unfortunately, uh, growth hormone has got a bad rap for, from the body. Uh, or weightlifting world, uh, a lot of abuse, uh, not only in the weightlifting world, but also, you know, the professional athletes. Um, and here, Jose Conseco uh, admitted that he basically, you know, used growth hormone and made him stronger, healthy, and sexier. I don't think he's on human growth hormone now, because the last time I saw him, he didn't look healthy or sexy <laughs> or strong. <laughs>